हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी बेंडिंग इक्वेशन दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस बेंडिंग स्ट्रेसेस इन बीम्स सो बेंडिंग इक्वेशन वी वांट टू डिराइव द बेंडिंग इक्वेशन व्हिच विल बी यूज्ड इन मेनी न्यूमेरिकल्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस सो व्हाट इज बेंडिंग इक्वेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट द सिंपल बेंडिंग थ्योरी थ्योरी ऑफ सिंपल बेंडिंग राइट इन विच द बेंडिंग मूवमेंट वॉज द ओनली लोड अप्लाइड ऑन द बीम एंड देर वॉज नो शेयर स्ट्रेस दैट वॉज द थ्योरी ऑफ सिंपल बेंडिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज हेयर दैट देर इज ए बीम लाइक दिस सपोज दिस इज ए बीम एंड ए सिंपल bending is prevailed here where a bending moment is applied by the application of bending moment this body this body is deformed deformed there will be compression at the outer fiber and tension in the lower fiber so this is the neutral layer suppose this is the neutral layer this was our neutral layer the length of neutral layer is same there is some decrease in the length of uh, that outer fiber decrease in length of outer fiber and there is increase in length of lower fiber so suppose this is the condition after bending after bending the condition is like this right where there is there is some curvature obtained in this case right so there is some curvature right and this is the neutral layer this is suppose a a this is b and this is neutral layer n l and this is c and d this a becomes a dash b dash due to compression c dash d dash due to tension and this is as it is n dash l dash and suppose there is some uh, center of this curvature all the fibers of this beam have same center of curvature as this is the assumption of this theory this is the center of curvature and suppose this is the theta theta is this this is the deformation theta and this is the suppose radius this is radius r radius uh, this is a radius of curvature of the neutral layer and radius of curvature of the neutral layer right so we are taking a small section of this uh, there was a big beam suppose and we are taking a small section what is happening in the that part of the beam we are considering that small part right suppose a long beam was there and we are considering a small part suppose the this length is small although i am showing it large but so, to make the clarity but uh, we have we are discussing about a small length dx of the beam small length dx of the beam what is happening in this small length of the beam right so the each and uh, every fiber of this material is either in compression or in tension except the neutral layer except the neutral layer each layer is either in compression or tension right we want to know about the uh, any layer at a distance y from the at a distance y from the neutral layer suppose this right so this is the distance y this is y distance and what is happening here what is the deformation in this layer suppose this is layer e, e f e f so what is happening in this layer ef right we want to find out the strain strain in ef 
what is the strain in EF and because this is below the neutral layer so there will be increase in length of EL there will be increase in length of EL like this and suppose it will become E dash L dash EF so this is L dash and this is F dash E dash F dash so this is the our concerned layer at which we want to find out what is happening in this layer right I am making a certain board so that we can know what is that we are concerned about this layer right so any layer can be there we have taken this layer y right at a distance y from the neutral layer right so we are concerned about this layer here also I am making bold so that you can understand that our purpose is to find out the strain in this layer and that will be a generalized case when we are taking strain in one of the layer EF at a, which is at a distance y so what is going on the strain the strain in EF strain in EF will be equal to the change in dimensions change in length of EF upon original length this is the definition of strain change in length upon original length the change in length is E dash F dash minus EF E dash F dash minus EF this is the change in length upon original length EF. Change in length upon original length. Original length is EF. Right? Now, uh, in the previous lecture, we have studied that, studied that this is R theta, N dash L dash was R theta, N dash L dash was R theta. We have already studied this, that, that uh, N dash L dash is equal to R theta and this is also equal to NL NL because there is no stress in the neutral layer neutral layer fiber so this is also equal to NL and because NL is the original dimension so originally the dimension was same it was a linear beam initially so this is equal to AB this is also equal to CD this is also equal to EF this is also equal to AB or CD or EF this we have already studied in previous lecture check your pre previous lecture that this is N dash L dash after deformation after curvature this is equal to R theta radius multiplied by the angle of twist so R theta and this is equal to NL because there is no stress in the neutral layer and because it is NL all the layers are equal in the initial condition so NL, AB, CD, EF all are same and all are equal to CD, R theta, R theta. So this is the, this is the value of initial uh, values of all the layers, this is R theta. So this, this is equal to, what is E dash F dash? E dash F dash, this is R plus Y theta, radius multiplied by the angle. So R plus Y multiplied by theta minus r theta divided by r theta divided by r theta so some some things will be cancelled out r theta r theta will cancel out theta theta so you will get y by r so strain in ef is equal to y by r the distance of uh, the fiber ef from the neutral axis y divided by the radius curvature from the neutral axis so this is y by r so this is the strain in ef and we know that the strain is also given as strain can also be given as in any fiber strain can also be given as stress upon modulus of elasticity so stress in ef stress in ef upon modulus of elasticity upon modulus of elasticity e so this is another equation we know already this from the Hooke's law, from Hooke's law, we know that stress upon modulus of elasticity is strain, right? So this is the second equation. And from one and two, we can generalize the case. I'm writing stress here only. It is understood that this is stress is in layer at a distance y, right? From the neutral axis. 
So from 1 and 2, 1 is equal to 2. So we will get sigma by E equal to y bar r. Right? Is it okay? Sigma y e is equal to y by r or sigma y y is equal to e by r and this is the very important equation, one of the equation of bending equation. Basically bending equation are two equations combined together. We have got the one equation, right? We have got the one equation that sigma y y is equal to e by r, right? So this is very important equation, you have to remember this. Bending equation, one part of the bending equation, right? And from here we can also find out the stress. Stress is given by E by R multiplied by Y. What it shows, what it shows? It shows that E is constant, this is the modulus of the the whole material. R is constant, this is the radius curvature of the neutral axis. But y is varying and as a y is varying, sigma is varying. So bending stresses are linear, have a linear variation with respect to y. So bending stresses in uh, y are varying linearly, right? And if y is 0, stress is 0. So we can draw a diagram here now. You can draw a diagram here that like this. That at the center, at the neutral layer, there is no stress, y is 0. As y is increasing, as y is increasing, as y is increasing, stress is also increasing linearly, right? Here it is compressive, here it is compressive, compressive I am showing like this, and here it is tensile, tensile showing above, away from the this axis, right? So this is tensile and this is compressive, right? And it is maximum at the outer periphery. It is maximum at the outer periphery when the y is maximum. So here, sigma t is maximum and sigma c is maximum at the outer periphery, right? So outer fiber has maximum stresses and neutral layer has zero stresses. That's why we have written that n dash l is equal to nl because there is no change in neutral layer and there was no stress in the neutral layer, right? So maximum stress is in the outer, at the outer periphery or outer fiber, right? So here I can write sigma max, sigma max will be equal to E is constant, R is constant, Y will be maximum, so sigma will be maximum where Y is maximum and Y is maximum at the outer fiber, outer fiber, that's why we are writing y max here, the distance of the y from the neutral layer. So this is the one of the equation, sigma by y is equal to e by r. This is the one of the equation of the bending equation. And from this equation, we have obtained the linear variation of stress from the neutral layer to the outer fiber. That stress is varying linearly, right? And maximum stress will be there at the outer fiber where y is maximum. In next session, we are going to find out the second part of this equation, second part of bending equation and there will be two equations combined together. So in continuation, let us uh, now uh, find out the second part of bending equation. First we have already found out that sigma by y equal to E by R. This was the first part of bending equation which we have already found out. Equation number 3, sigma y, y is equal to e bar r, r is the modulus of elasticity, r is the radius of curvature of the beam, right? Here, now, uh, let us go to the transverse section, cross-section area of this beam. What type of cross-section area is this beam? It may be having a rectangular section. So, let us assume that the cross-section area of this beam is rectangular and let us see what is happening there. We have already found out the moment of resistance. So let us see what is happening in the transverse section of this beam. Transverse section of this beam, right? So this is the neutral axis passing through neutral layer, neutral axis. And we have already found out the what is uh, moment of resistance, right? So 
for that what we have done is we have taken a small area small area da small area da and a force acting on this is df at a distance y same distance we are taking here y distance at a distance y from the this neutral axis we have taken a distance y right and we have found out the moment of resistance what is moment of resistance moment of resistance is a moment of this force about y and we have to integrate it to find the total moment of resistance so what was to moment of resistance you should remember moment of resistance was that was the force multiplied by uh, the moment of this force so y into df and we know that the force is equal to stress multiplied by area the stress acting on this element which we have already obtained stress at a distance y so stress multiplied by area so this will be equal to y multiplied by stress multiplied by area and from equation number 3 we know from equation number 3 we know that stress is given by stress is given by uh, e by r multiplied by y you can put here and you will get dm will be equal to dm will be equal to e by r e by r we have put the value of stress e by r, y square d y square d so this is the small moment of resistance of this fiber right which is at its distance y this area moment of resistance right and we want to find out the total moment of this uh, cross section is uh, transfer section so what will be the total moment so total moment m will be equal to integral of this integral of all moments so this will be equal to e by r integration of y square d y square d and what is the integration of y square d you already know this is the moment of inertia of this cross section so this is the moment of inertia so we know that moment of inertia is equal to y square da integral second moment of area Basic, basically this is the second moment of area second moment of this area and second moment of this area is basically the moment of inertia so we can write m equal to e by r multiplied by moment of inertia right so moment of inertia we have taken or you can write from here m by i equal to e by r so this is one more equation bending equation we have obtained the equation number four so this e by r equal to m by i this e by r is also equal to sigma by y we can combine two equations these are bending equation basically two bending equations we can combine these two bending equation and we can uh, use this result for our uh, application purpose so final result i am writing bending equation as so what is bending equation we are getting is bending equation what bending equation we are getting is m by i sigma by y e by r m by i sigma is a bending stress normal bending stress sigma by y equal to e by r where m is the moment of resistance i is the moment of inertia sigma is the bending stress which may be tensile which may be compressive it is normal stress y is the location where this stress is available where we want to find out this stress and e by r is it okay so by this we can find out the bending equation and this is very important equation will be used suppose this is equation number a so this will be used in many applications is it okay